Hello. And I would like to talk about signing and validating serverless functions. So I prepared the, like a kind of an introduction, a few slides, just to talk about uh, code signing, why it's important. Uh, but I think after all these talks today, uh, we can skip this very basic introduction. But I think you know one key takeaway I would take from this slide is that there's increasing attack and increasing you no know, interest in attacking CI/CD pipelines. Code can be modified, can be changed. You heard a lot about it. Uh, we can move ahead. Uh, OpenSSF. Uh, was founded to address those supply chain threats. Uh, Project Sigstore started independently, now it's part of SSF. Uh, Open SSF to address the code pipeline phase, and I'm sure there'll be a few more talks even later today about it. Um, and Sigstore is, of course, looking how to uh, sign and leverage uh, this information in CI CD pipeline. How does Sigstore work? And again, it's very, very just on a nutshell, so it can all be you know, on the same. Uh, line just like as a small background. So Sigstore is a collection of tools, uh, created a very nice uh, model of, you know, keyless signing model. It also has the classical, uh, you know, pub uh, the classical signing with private and public key. Um, but if using, you know, the keyless signing, uh, you can use full seal, which gives you a root certificate authority together with OpenID Connect. Uh, you can get a timestamp certificate and co-sign uh, can use this for signing, creating a signature, record, a transparency log, which will be constantly, you know, query and monitor uh, to get verification and provenance. Um, and as I said, you know, cosign can also be used uh, in traditional key pair in case that your CI CD doesn't support the keyless signing model uh, and you want to use it in a traditional way. Okay, that's just the introduction. We can move to the real uh, topic of my, of my talk. Now, serverless. Why serverless are different? What makes them, you know, different than everything we heard until now? That, you know, everybody talk about, you know, how we identify, you know, the hashes, what do we use. So container images typically identify with their hash. It's very easy. Uh, today, it's a very common practice in Kubernetes to validate those images before deployment. So it's almost like, you know, built in. Whether using an you know, open source tool like Gatekeeper or Kiverno, whether using your own proprietary thing, this is a classical, you know, security precautions be used by almost everyone to validate the images, you know, or were not changed or tempered. Now, in serverless functions, usually you upload your source code into your cloud account, so there is no hashes. Now, my friend here on the, on the right side talked about drifts in your, you know, cloud, you know, deployments, and it apply also for serverless. You know, you deploy with one permission, eventually you get some drift, you get some changes, so you probably don't want just to sign you know, your code, you also want to sign the deployment file, whether using you know, a cloud formation template, whether using any other infrastructure as a code, you want maybe also to sign it to verify that even those uh, artifacts were not, were not uh, changed. So this is something which is probably uh, a preliminary need. Now in serverless, there's one more challenge because the cloud providers don't give you this admission controller. Those give you this like validation function that can validate any action before you start executing the code. So those are the challenges why serverless is like a slightly different use case than any container image or the classical uh, you know, uh, signing and verification process that we do. Now there is one exception in AWS. So AWS has its own built-in solution. It's called code signing. It's a great uh, step to secure serverless functions. Uh, you can use code signing for Lambda functions. Um, you can sign your code, okay, and then upload the signed code into the cloud account or to a three bucket. Then you need to create a signing profile, which using you know the IAM permissions to identify who and what can be signed. And then you can apply this signing profile to any Lambda function that you want, and it verifies that the Lambda is signed and then before it executes, it verifies that it's signed and it's, and it's secure. So this is a great approach. Uh, what I would like to present is a, an alternative approach, which using SIGSTORE to sign it. So you can use SIGSTORE and CoSign to sign serverless functions in their deployment file. It's a standard tool, so it can be used for any you know, cloud provider, not just AWS. Um, it's designed to be used in CI/CD, so it's very easy to implement and edit 
uh, as part of your CD, so it's really simple. Uh, you have the keyless uh, signing option, which is slightly safer. It's very nice uh, to implement. It's slightly still challenging to deploy, but um, it's a very nice uh, and safer option. And of course, you can extend it not just to sign the function code, you can also sign you know, the same deployment file. But Sixtor still, at the moment, lack appropriate validation option. It has a validation admission controller for Kubernetes. It lacks um, a validation option for serverless functions. So what we did, and this is uh, in Cisco, in, ETN, in the Emerging and Technology Innovation Team, we created an open source validation function. And we created a whole template for this validation mechanism. So how, how does it work? Um, so again, use cosign uh, bulb option to sign your code or sign any you know, artifact that you want in your CI CD. You can use the key pair, private and public, or the keyless, uh, which in turn requires to deploy record uh, in your environment, or at least have access to it. Um, store the certificate and the signature in a secret storage. Uh, in this template, we use it for KM. We use the, we use the in AWS, so we use KMS for it. And then you need to create like a small mechanism for alert and eventing. So uh, you need to get notification for any function creation or modification. So in this case, what we did, we used the cloud trail with the event bridge. So we created a rule that only trigger, create an event that trigger a function only when there is a new cloud function or modification to, uh, to a Lambda function. Now this rule allow us to invoke a validating function. So what we wrote is a validating function. This validating function take uh, the, the key, whether the key or the certificate, take it from the KMS, calculate uh, for, this, for the function which you deploy or the function which you update and calculate the hash and calculate you know, if, if the same key matches. And then it provides an output which can be used to whether you want to allow or to block uh, the function invocation process. So it's, you know, it's like we created like sort of an admission controller that can be used for AWS account it using the native tools like CloudTrail and EventBridge can use the same thing uh, for in, in Azure and or in uh, Google Cloud. So what I want to say that, you know, supply chain, the risk is increasing. Serverless are special use cases. It's much harder uh, to validate them. You can use open source tool like Sigstore, which for code signing. You can use Open Clarity. Uh, it's an open source you know, repository where you can find templates. You can find validating function going to be uploaded in the next few days. Uh, and we encourage everyone uh, to go ahead and use it. Uh, give us good feedback. Uh, we'll be happy to fix and modify it. Could be for, we're going to plan to upload fu validating function for any uh, cloud provider. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Ariel. This was really good. So uh, I have one question. So does it have any performance impact? Because typically people see with serverless, they, you need to execute very fast. Right. If you're adding these additional steps. Exactly. So yes, it has a performance impact. This is why we, in the validated function, we use the keeper, the public-private keeper. So it's a little bit traditional mode. But then you can really deploy it locally and can have a minimal uh, performance impact. OK, interesting. Uh, any other questions? Okay, let's thank, thank you very much. Okay. Um, hello. Uh, do you manage the, um, some custom uh, root certificate uh, for the key management of the six store uh, to create the certificate to sign your um, your lambda function, or you're using just the default one of um, cosine? So I'm not sure I heard the question. Can you just repeat? So you 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 sign okay. You, you sign the, the, um, the Lambda function via Sigstore, uh, Cosign, or, or whatever. Yes. But which kind of certificate do you use? The default one or a custom certificate from uh, a root certificate? Okay, so you can use both, right? You can use their own if it's a killer signing, or you can use your own if it's, you know, you want to uh, make it simpler to deployment. So at the moment, the killer is only working with certain frameworks like, you know, GitHub Action. Right. So we use, you know, the classical traditional mode if you want to get universal. But both options are available. Yeah, thanks, Ariel. Thank you very much.